Hi, this is Father Jim Martin for America Magazine, and I am at a place where I wanted to go for pretty much, I guess my whole life, certainly my whole Jesuit life. We are at the Sea of Galilee, uh, which is pretty amazing to me. I'm very excited to be here uh, with a good friend of mine. Okay, so this is a highlight of the trip for me. We are at Capernaum, where Jesus definitely lived during his years of public ministry. And we're on the shore of Capernaum. So this is what Jesus saw every day. Every day during his public ministry. Every day when he was in Capernaum. The sea of Galilee and all its beauty. And you can see the surrounding shores, and the towns where he went to preach. Who's to say that Jesus, when he lived in Capernaum, didn't stand right here and wonder about his mission and his life. We are at the primacy of Peter's spot where, after the resurrection, Peter is fishing and sees Jesus preparing a meal on the shore, jumps into the water and says, it is the Lord, and rushes up on the shore. You can imagine that happening right here, this low level. Here are all the people that have come to see it. And there's a church commemorating the spot where the meal happened. I'll pan around. And it's called the Mensa Christi Church. And inside is the stone upon which, traditionally, Jesus was preparing his supper. So here from the shore of Capernaum, is the Mount of the Beatitudes. You can see it, that's the rise in the distance. Not far at all from Jesus' hometown. So here is a beautiful site. It's called the Seven Springs or the Seven Fountains and the tradition is that this is one of the places where Jesus may have called Peter because this is a natural place to wash your nets. Here we are at Capernaum the place where Jesus uh, called home during his public ministry. And behind me are the ruins of the houses of the town. Uh, to the left is Peter's house. And behind me, you can see over my shoulder, uh, is a fourth century synagogue built on the place where the Capernaum synagogue was where Jesus, when Jesus was here. Uh, you remember that uh, he went into the synagogue to, to preach and uh, cast out a demon from a man immediately. So this is a very historic place. It's wonderful to be here. And it reminds us once again that Jesus, uh, you know, a real human being, uh, a real person, uh, in a real place and a real time. And here we are in this real place uh, that God chose to make his home among us. So here we are at St. Peter's house. The Spanish-speaking interpreter just said we are here at a place that's very, very important. And I'll just show you some of the ruins of what's traditionally considered Peter's house at Cafarno. In Jesus' hometown, the ruins of the houses and the place where Jesus made his home in Capernaum, which is pretty amazing. It's great being here at the scene of one of my favorite gospel passages. I love not only the uh, demonstration of Jesus' power uh, in front of the demon, uh, but also the way that uh, the man uh, can barely contain himself. Uh, he knows who Jesus is and he's, a, he's afraid. Uh, we're all afraid sometimes when uh, God comes to us and, and calls to us because we're sometimes afraid of change. Uh, but Jesus is very resolute uh, and drives the demon away. Uh, and, and the man is in his right mind at the end. Uh, it is amazing uh, for the people that, that see it. Um, it's probably very amazing for the man that it happened to. Uh, and it can be amazing in our lives uh, what God can do when we allow God to change us and we're not afraid. Uh, and we allow God to enter into our lives, he can transform us completely. So uh, the man uh, is an example of that. I think our lives are examples of that too in different ways. Uh, and it's great to be here where um, the first occasion of that happened in Christian history. We're still in Capernaum, Jesus' town. And I thought I'd offer a little bit of uh, spiritual reflection on uh, what has come to me in my prayer over the last few days. The first thing is, um, how close some of the towns are and how far apart some of them are. Uh, Capernaum is not far at all from uh, the Mount of the Beatitudes, uh, from the calling of Peter, 
um, and uh, from the multiplication of the loaves. So there's a lot of stuff right within the vicinity of Jesus' hometown, which makes a lot of sense. And it gives a lot of meaning to the gospel, at least more meaning for me. Um, the second thing uh, related to that, though, a lot of the towns are very far apart. So when you hear about uh, someone walking to Jericho or Jesus going from Nazareth to Capernaum, it's pretty far. It's not right next door. Uh, and that also helps us understand the gospel, just understanding these distances. Uh, second of all, uh, it's amazing to me uh, to think of uh, Jesus uh, in this particular place. Uh, and it gives, it gives real resonance to his words. Uh, Jesus was not talking in generalities, uh, you know, when he talked about the birds and, and the seeds and things like that. He wasn't talking about seeds in general or birds in general or clouds in general. He was talking about the birds here, the seeds here, the clouds here that people could, could sort of see and touch uh, and hear. And you can hear some of the birds of the air. Uh, tweeting right now, um, and uh, and then the third thing I think is just uh, the mystery of God choosing a particular place. Uh, uh, a sister friend of mine told me that she was here recently, and uh, she looked around and saw how beautiful it was, uh, and said, "You know, God, you picked a pretty good place." Uh, so why Jesus would have uh, picked this place, and also why Jesus would have come from Nazareth, you know, where he was a carpenter, uh, to the Sea of Tiberias, to Lake Galilee. Um, whatever name you want to call it by, is, is really mysterious. You know, what is it that drew Jesus to, to the sea uh, and to this place uh, and to here, right where we're standing at Gugfarnum, to do his ministry? Uh, it's it's um, the same in our lives. We sometimes wonder why God uh, does certain things in our lives and why God, God calls us in certain ways and why God acts in certain ways. Uh, so here in Gugfarnum, just a few questions to think about. Um, this is Jim Martin for America Magazine. God bless you.